Introduction to Curve Fitting. In this lecture, we'll just talk a little bit about what curve fitting is, why do we care, and when we fit a line to a bunch of measured samples, there's potentially noise, we need to somehow measure how good that fit is. And so that's why we need to discuss the statistics of data sets, because this is really how we evaluate the fit, how good the fit is, and in fact, even derive the fits. What is curve fitting and why do we care? Curve fitting is when we have a bunch of measured samples, so I'm showing these in red, and we have an analytical equation. And we would like to somehow choose A, B, C, and D such that this curve fits the measured data as best as possible. And so it's somehow playing with the values of A, B, C, and D until that fit curve fits our measured data better than anything else. That is curve fitting. Here we're fitting some kind of exponential looking thing, but it could be straight lines, it could be cosines, Bessel functions, and, and anything else out there. Why do we even want to do this? Very often, we don't really care about the randomness in our samples. We just want to visualize an overall trend. Maybe we want to remove noise from a function. Very often, if we have an analytical expression, the parameters in that analytical expression have physical meaning. And so if we do a curve fit, we can then extract these physical parameters. An example might be if we fit a cosine to a set of measurements. From that, we can extract frequency, phase, amplitude, and other things that have physical meaning to us. We might want to do an interpolation. If we want to know a value between measurements, what do we do? Well, we would fit that to a line or a curve, and then we would use that function to then calculate values in between. That's interpolation. Maybe we want to find a minimum or a maximum, and our measurements don't quite hit that, but if we can extract a trend, we can fit that to some kind of equation and determine the minimum or maximum from that. We're going to be using techniques we're learning here to eventually derive finite difference approximations. That topic we'll reserve for a later lecture. Curve fitting falls basically into two categories. The first is the best fit. And when we talk about linear regression and nonlinear regression, this is what we'll be discussing. So we have many, many samples, probably many more samples than we have parameters in our line or function. And we're doing a best fit. We can't pass exactly through all of those points. So there is some error there. And when we derive how we do linear and nonlinear regression, we'll derive this in a way that minimizes that amount of error. The other thing is an exact fit. And very often this is what's done with polynomials or splines. And we will use this specifically when we get to deriving finite difference approximations, but this is also used for finding minimums and maximums and zero crossings. And we'll see this in optimizations and many other things. So exact fits are very useful, but they're an exact fit, no noise in the measurements here. Statistics of data sets. Probably the most common one is called the arithmetic mean. And this is basically a way, if we have a huge set of data, if we have to somehow reduce that to a single number, oh gosh, what on earth would that single number be? It would probably be the arithmetic mean. It is the value that we choose that's closest to all the other values as possible. There's another type of mean called the geometric mean. Rather than add up all our samples, divide by the number, we multiply all our samples. And if that's m number of those, we take the mth root. The geometric mean is used a lot in optimization because let's say we have different things that we're weighing how good something is. Maybe it's how good a car is. And one of those metrics is the turn signals. The other is the brakes. The other is the gas pedal. If we were to average all those, let's say the brakes didn't work. If we were to average the performance, we had awesome turn signals and an awesome throttle we might get a metric that makes that car look pretty good, but you know what? It's not gonna stop and you're gonna crash. 
Whereas if the functionality of the brakes was a zero and we took the geometric mean, well, the overall geometric mean would still be zero. So different way of doing the mean and useful in optimization and other areas. Variance and standard deviation. Given that we've calculated some kind of average, we would like some metric about that quantifies the spread of the data about the average, and that's the standard deviation. Now, the standard deviation carries the same units as the data itself. So if we're measuring the height of a bunch of people, we're measuring the height in centimeters, our standard deviation will be in centimeters. Very often, we use a parameter called variance. This is just the standard deviation squared. So in a sense, if you know one, you know the other. In my mind, they're kind of the same thing. Well, they're not exactly the same thing because the variance is squared, but it's conveying the same information. It's the amount of spread your data has relative to its average value. Then we have the coefficient of variation. This really is the standard deviation but it's normalized to the average. So we can kind of think of it as a relative standard deviation. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.